Good afternoon everyone out there in YouTube land. My name is Jared and this is my channel Mazda B3K. In this video I am going to tackle my blown out 7 and 4 pin trailer connectors and get that replaced. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here is the current state of my 7 pin connector and you'll see the, the pins in there are super corroded, so it's shot. And this is where the, the four pin is supposed to slot in, but it has a nasty habit of popping out. But it gets better. This is what goes on the other side of the seven pin connector, right here. It's what connects in. The locking mechanism is totally thrashed on it, so that's busted. And then here is our four pin, still there, but clogged and corroded. So not looking good for the home team. And if you look closely, the wiring is, sorry, there we go. Put my hand there, that'll help. Yes, there we go. The uh, insulation's cracking because it's had exposure to the sun. And UV radiation is a thing. Now... I have a two-part solution to this. You could do it in one part if you got the right part. So, first we're going to talk about the official correct solution. The official correct solution is you buy this assembly here, and it includes this metal bracket and this cover, and it includes the entire wire pigtail, which... The pigtail and an F-250 goes up, goes around the hitch, and then it terminates up there. So you see there's two gray connectors there. The top gray connector is the other end of the seven pin hitch right there. So you can buy this pigtail that starts there, ends here, and includes this bracket and all of this from Ford for $180. Now, if any of you guys are return viewers and have watched my channel before, you know that's not how I roll. So, I bought this. And it is a Kurt OEM to seven way RV blade and four way flat. Hmm. RV blade. That might become a problem down the road. And I'll explain that in a second. But I bought this guy. And what this is for is if you have an existing 7-pin harness on your vehicle and you want to turn it into a 7 and a 4-pin. So here's your 4 We'll get to that in a second. This is your seven. And I'm pretty sure that the screw holes are gonna line up with the existing ones here for Ford so I can reuse this bracket. But we have a problem, as you can see. This thing's really short. I mean, it's only about half a foot of wire, which is not enough. And the connector's wrong. This is According to what I see here, a seven-way RV blade connector. And that is supposed to plug into this. So the idea behind this guy is he replaces the last mile, the very last little bit, and then plugs into this if you only have a seven-way, and then you get a seven-way plus a four-way. But, with all of this wire corroded and cracked on both the 7 and the 4, this doesn't fully solve the problem. So I had to come up with something else. And for me, the something else solution was I went to the junkyard and I found this 7 and 4 pin harness, this entire harness that I just talked about. This one came off of an excursion 
the pinouts are the same, the connectors are the same, it's about the right length, and I'm going to swap that whole harness leg because this one's in pretty good shape. The actual pins look really good, they're not corroded. This is all beat up and toasted, but I already have one of these with the adapter I bought. So I'm going to snip that down here where you see these wires are so badly cracked. And then I'm going to hit it with some liquid tape to insulate it off and then forget it exists, basically. Be good. So that's what we're going to do. Now, to get this swapped, is a little bit more difficult because as I showed our harness leg here it goes over the hitch and then it goes up into there and it's really difficult to get to as it stands so what we're going to need to do probably is drop the spare tire I think that'll give me the room I need to get up in there. I mean, I might be able to do it down here. The connector in question, it's a up there at the rail where it connects. It's a push it down and then pull the connector free. So I might be able to do it. Um, let me mess with it a little bit and see what I can get. All right, folks, I have a plan. So this is what we do. First, we eat sand. It's delicious. Second, you have this little uh, wire guide tab that's plugged in up on the frame rail to hold this in position. Take a removal tool, a cat claw, pop that back out, and then this will let it, the connector droop down and you can get access to where the push pin is right there where you can push it down and then pull this free. So that's step number two is we're going to push that down, get this free, and then we can do the swap. All right, so here on the left, this came out of the excursion. It has, interesting, it has four pins on the outside and four pins in the middle, on the floor it goes, and then this guy, hmm, okay, so this is not going to work, not without repinning, because this guy also has three, but they're in a different setup, and it also has four in the middle, but they're in a different setup, so I would need to repin this connector to make this work. I need to compare some wire colors, see if I can make this work for me. Alright guys, so I did some figuring, I did some researching, and what I found is that on the Super Duties, starting at around 2000, Ford changed the internal wiring in 01, changed it again in 02, changed it again in 03, changed it again in 04. And that the excursion, which is where I got that other pigtail from, was already wired differently because it's an excursion and it has more stuff it's supporting electrically. They were nicer on the inside, basically. So I've kind of chucked that idea of trying to, to do D-pins and re-pins and all that good stuff. And instead, I bought these two things right here make it work so firstly we're going to have a a hopkins uh 40975 that's a seven blade and four flat connector i kind of like the setup on this because you don't have a little four pin dangling around to get torn up you have a single seven pin connector and then inside this plastic i'm sure there's some metal bracketry that runs connectivity conductivity, I guess, over to your four pin. And how this works is behind door number one, if I can open it with one hand, show you, is the four pin. 
And then behind door number two, if I can get it open, is your seven pin. And then it uses a standard seven pin connection on the back. So that is the connector I went with. And it does come with the mounting hardware. Like so. Got a couple of screws in the bracket. But then I needed something to get this back to the vehicle proprietary Ford connector. And that's where the the Concha 118243 comes in. So it also has a seven pin connector, but I'm not going to use it. So I'll have one spare for something. Not sure what. And this is the standard female side of that, and it will plug in just fine to this. And then most importantly, this is the Ford proprietary connector that is pin connect pin correct for a 2001 Ford F250 Super Duty. So now I've got the wire harness, I've got the connector, and I even have the needed relays if I need to ha get them installed. I got to go check my PDU and the needed mega fuses again, or no, these are called maxi fuses, sorry. Uh, if I need to install them, which they may or may not be there. I don't know how much heavy duty towing the previous owner did in this guy. So now that we've got all the pieces laid out, let's go ahead and start swapping them out. And I will bring you guys back when I go to do the reinstallation. All right, well, I apologize for the camera angle here, but just not a very good angle with the tire in the way and everything. So we're going to go for get this over the bumper. And this needs to go into here. And it goes in just like that. I'm not hearing it click. Yeah, so that's the right one, but it doesn't want to go all the way in. Almost. there it goes all right so now that is connected and it worked perfectly now we're going to take this uh, cable guide and it's going to go back in the hole up here and I need to get a new pair of safety glasses these are getting hard to use can't see uh, there we go all right so what that does i'll let the camera running so you can see is it it tucks this back up here so it's sitting neat and pretty and you don't have to worry about it and what you can also see if i move the camera a little bit is we've got ample cable that we can route this exactly the same way as the factory routed it so something like that and we're not going to have to worry at all about doing weird things because we've got the roughly the same we need about a foot that's about how long this is and we got it so i'm really happy with that and now we can remove this bracket and go ahead and install the new bracket. Um, that looks like a 13, 13 socket right there. And then that drops the entire bracket. And then I'll go ahead and install the new one. <sighs> okay, so I was doing some looking and I realized really quickly that installing this where the old bracket was is not going to work because the bumper is going to get in the way of the connector so that means we could set up directly on the hitch 
I don't think it's really going to weaken it structurally. And we'd be good. I have enough cable that I can just kind of bring this over and bring it around. It'll work. But then my concern is if I had a trailer and didn't get enough wire. So I think what I've decided, since all we're doing is supporting uh, just wiring pigtails, we can screw into this, this thinner metal here, and that's not going to be a big deal. So that's what we're going to do. The included hardware is actually fairly beefy. They uh, intended, I guess, that you be you might be screwing into some heavy-duty metal. Uh, so it's a self-tapper. That's what the tip shows you, and it is a 12 millimeter. Now, when I took off the forward bracket over here, that turned out to be a 15 millimeter, and I had to get my impact driver to get it off. It was in there tight, very tight. So I'm gonna knock it in through here into the bumper. Um, I don't think that's gonna be a big issue. And uh, I don't think we'll have a cabling problem because, we're, I mean, we're going from there to here. So that's an extra couple of inches over. So I think we'll be all right. The only other thing I was thinking about that would be a concern would be um, if the connector it was drooping down further. When I look at this, you're at the same drop depth, so you're going to have about the same amount of ground clearance as you would have had with the stock OEM Ford setup. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get these in, and I'll bring you back. One other thing, guys, before we start getting down and dirty, huh, dirty on the drilling of the holes for our bracket, get some safety glasses not only are you probably dealing with however many years of dirt and crust that's going to vibrate loose from your truck using an impact driver but you're also going to have chunks of metal that your self tappers are going to be ripping out and flinging all over you so get some safety glasses on if you feel the need get gloves and pants and long sleeves i did the glasses i'm glad i did it kept metal chunks out of them getting out from getting in my eyes so safety first or thirds first thirds okay so you're gonna need to use an impact driver to get that in even with the thinner metal of the bumper here um i tried to go into the hitch but that steel is just too thick uh, so the connector itself is locked in with these clips that you see here and here so make sure that you are right side up and then just feed it in from the front locks in and you take the connector and you bring it over and we plug it in like so And there you have it. At this point, you've got factory, you've got OEM equivalent operation uh, restored to your truck, except for it doesn't cost $185, which is what Ford wants for all of this. Now you got it for roughly 100 and I consider this a good repair so real quick I noticed when I installed this that initially it wiggled a little bit and it's because these locking brackets are supposed to kind of pop down at the bottom and then pop up at the top and they didn't go all the way so if you take a screwdriver pull this one down, push the other one up, they'll fully extend, and then it'll snug up the connector so that it won't feel wiggly in the bracket anymore. 
So after we finish the actual physical installation under the back of the truck, we need to come up here to the PDU or power distribution unit that is in the engine bay to make sure that we have the fuses and relays installed that we need to do it to do towing. And I went ahead and took a look and I'm missing the fuses, but I have the relays. So your PDU is here, it's got a little tab you can pull, and this is what it looks like. Alright, so I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see in the camera, but if you look closely, you're going to see there's some stuff not used, and this may vary a little bit if, say, you have uh, one, a power stroke diesel. There's certain fuses that'll be there that are not here, and the reverse is also true. There are also some gasoline-only fuses. If you want to get a diagram, you can Google and come up with one for the PDU. But the key point here is when you're looking in, you will see a couple of places where these maxi fuses go, and there's none in there you'll actually see the metal contacts are installed versus one that is completely not used where there's no metal contacts installed. So what we need to do is go ahead. <clears throat> In my case, a 30 needs to go here, which is four down from the top and the left. And then a fuse needs to go there. And what those two fuses control, if you look them up, is one is 12 volt <clears throat> through your trailer harness, and the other is battery charge. Oh, sorry, one is for the brake balance controller, and one is for 12 volt. So now that those have fuses in them, the circuits are connected, and those things can actually work. So one of the last things I'm going to need to do is actually get a brake balance controller, which I don't have one yet. I was just restoring the functionality of the wiring in the rear. But now that that is done, we're good. De again, depending on your truck, you may have had some relays missing here that you need. I believe all of the towing relays are located here in the PDU and none of them are in the kick panel under the driver's seat or under the steering wheel, really, where you would need to put some fuses in. So check all that. The kit I bought and also includes relays, if you need them. I don't believe I do, but I'm definitely hanging on to those because having an extra relay is always handy. All right, that takes care of that. And with that, we should be good. And at this point, you can go ahead and get your trailer, whether it be a 4-pin or a 7-pin. You really need both, or at least a 7-pin to test all the functionality. Uh, hook them up, see what you get, but that's another video for another day. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video where we replace the 7 and 4 pin trailer connector on my 2001 Ford F-250 named Miss Mildew. So please, if this video is useful, hit the thumbs up, make a like, that helps the channel to grow, helps me work within the YouTube algorithms. Please also share and subscribe. Leave me some comments. I like to read them. I like to reply to them. I like to learn from them. And remember, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. I'll see you guys next episode.